This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Ah, okay, I think I know what this is about. Studio Spiders and Beetles, I want to sincerely apologize for throwing out your basket of shoes. The fact that from my vantage point, it looked like a tiny pile of trash is beside the point. You do live here, and I need to be more aware of your possessions. In fact, I'm going to build you a miniature shoe rack so you have a place to put the new shoes I ordered for you. I will take your silence as acceptance for my apology. Okay, great. Moving on to something completely unrelated. Our story is called Timothy V. Turtle and the Apology Fairy. Take it away, Sophie and Lucy. Remember, there there are are no pictures. pictures. You'll have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You can can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. Timothy V. Turtle was on his way home, rounding Wormley Pond, pushing a wheelbarrow filled with decorative gravel he intended to spread around the border of his garden when he heard a soft crunch. Timothy had been lost in thought, considering the best way to install a stone walkway outside his little cottage and it took a second for him to think to investigate the origin of the crunching sound. He looked down and saw that beneath the wheels of his wheelbarrow was a patch of brightly colored daisies. They were beautiful daisies. At least, they had been. Now they were smushed into the ground, their stems torn. Hmm. Timothy heard the sound of someone coming towards him and turned to see his neighbor, Bedelia. My flowers, she cried, hopping over to inspect the damage. Timothy eased the wheelbarrow off Bedelia's flowers. She glared at him, her rabbit nose twitching with frustration. I just planted those yesterday, she said, stricken. Timothy felt a great sense of unease spread over him, and he looked away from his neighbor. Then, quietly, he muttered, Oops. He began ambling home with his wheelbarrow. He felt Bedelia's eyes on him the whole way. Timothy tried to put the whole episode out of his mind. Such things unsettled him, so he tried not to focus on them. At home, Timothy rested his wheelbarrow near his flower garden. Then he went inside and made himself a sandwich. It was a beautiful sandwich. Maybe you don't think of sandwiches as being beautiful. Maybe it seems like a stretch to call a sandwich beautiful. It's not. This sandwich had about seven layers, all visible from a side view. It also had a number of condiments, including rosemary-infused butter and ketchup. Timothy was rather proud of it and hesitated before biting into it, thinking to himself, amused, that it rather belonged in a museum instead of his tummy. His stomach growled. Timothy lifted the magnificent sandwich, leaned forward, and the door to Timothy's cottage cracked into pieces as it burst open due to an unseen force. Timothy was so startled, he dropped his sandwich, and all seven layers of it scattered across the floor. Timothy reflexively withdrew his head inside his shell. Seconds later, someone was calling to him. Hello, Timothy. yo The voice did not sound like some towering creature that might eat him. 
It sounded small. Timothy stretched his head just enough to be able to peer out. In the rubble where his front door had been, there was a twinkling cloud. Out from that cloud floated a tiny turtle with wings. Timothy blinked again and again, thinking he couldn't possibly be seeing what he thought he was seeing. But each time he refocused his vision, the tiny flying turtle was there. The twinkling cloud, however, was not. It seemed to have dissipated, so that all that was left were a few sparkles floating in the air, like dust motes in a stale room. Well, hello. Come now, Timothy V. Turtle. Let's have a look at you said the tiny turtle, fluttering her wings. Timothy slowly stretched his head from his shell. Who are you? How do you know my name? Why did you break down my door? The tiny turtle spun around and observed the wreckage inside Timothy's cottage. She clapped her feet together, sending out a spark. All of the rubble flew upwards, reconstituting the door. Timothy noticed the handle was now on the opposite side. There we are, my dear. Good as new, she trilled. What about my sandwich? Timothy said glumly, his tummy growling. The tiny turtle glanced at the seven layers of sandwich splayed across the ground. She winked one of her big eyes, and in a flash, the sandwich was back on Timothy's plate. The layers were all out of order. It wasn't nearly as appealing as it had been before, but it was a sandwich once again. Who are you? Timothy repeated. An excellent question. Difficult to answer. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 7 to 3, I'm the No Fairy. Tuesdays, I'm the Speak Up Fairy. Fridays, I'm the Disappointing Haircut Fairy. Saturdays, I'm the Lost Wallet Fairy. Occasionally, I fill in for the Tooth Fairy, but, ugh, teeth. Am I right? The tiny turtle scowled to herself. Then her expression cleared. And today for you, my dear. I am the Apology Fairy. But you can call me Nobelina. I'm here to help you learn how to apologize. Timothy was silent. He stared at this strange creature in his home. He stretched his neck all the way out from his shell. What do you mean, learn how to apologize? My dear, I've been watching you. In fact, I've been listening to you. Domenico! Timothy startled. As an even smaller flying turtle, the size of a mosquito, zipped into the room. Yes. Domenico, Roll the tape. Now hold on a minute. This is... Timothy was interrupted by his own voice crackling from the little tape player. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'll have one order of spaghetti squash with ketchup. Also, can I get a hot fudge sundae? I'll have some ketchup on that, too. Also, can I get a mosquito cupcake? Do you want ketchup on that, sir? Why not? Domenico clicked a button on the tape player and it went silent. Sorry, I think that was the wrong tape, Domenico muttered. Timothy sighed. That's fine, Domenico. I know you have lots of recordings. Uh, Timothy, uh, are you one of those turtles who puts ketchup on everything? I don't need to explain my ketchup usage to... Domenico clicked another button on the tape player. Hey, Tim, I had some leftover salad in here. You know where it went? Timothy immediately recognized the voice of his co-worker, Harold. He thought back to a few weeks earlier, when he'd found the salad in an unmarked box in the break room of the Shell Vitamin Factory where he worked. 
He thought maybe it had been abandoned, but... That was your salad? You ate my salad? Man, my mom made that for me. Uh, Tim? Oops. Domenico clicked off the tape player. Hmm. Nobelina blinked her big eyes. Timothy looked from Nobelina to Domenico and back again. You've been spying on me? That's way worse than not apologizing for eating someone's leftover salad. <sighs> My dear, spying is such an extreme term. Domenico has been documenting you at my behest. Isn't that right, Domenico? That's right, Domenico said, smiling. This has to be against the law. You can't just record turtles. Actually, Nobelina put on a pair of sparkly blue glasses and withdrew a small book from her shell. She flipped through the pages. We can, she said, shutting the book. There's very little turtle case law on this. Timothy stared at the ground, perplexed. Tim, can I call you Tim? Timothy shrugged. Tim, look at me, Tim. I'm here to help. I'm here because in the last year alone, you've given lackluster or non-apologies. Every single week. That can't be right. I know how to apologize. Really? Hmm. Domenico, roll another tape, please. Before Timothy could protest, another recording crackled on. Excuse me. Excuse me. The voice on the recording brought back an unpleasant memory. He'd been on the opposite side of the pond, looking for a particular type of cricket when... Excuse me? Uh, yes? Timothy heard his own shaky voice. I had a case filled with crickets, positively filled. I turned my back for one moment, and now my case of crickets is empty. It had been an accident. Timothy hadn't meant to knock over the case filled with crickets. He'd been walking aimlessly, not paying attention to where he was stepping, and he'd kicked it with his back left foot, causing the case to fall open. Where are my crickets? It was an accident. It took me hours to collect those crickets. There was a long pause on the tape during which all that could be heard was static. Nobelina raised her brow and pushed her sparkly blue glasses up between her large eyes. Domenico smiled as if this were a delightful activity. Finally, they heard a small, Oops. Domenico clicked off the tape. You're just, Timothy began to protest. But Nobelina cut in. Cherry-picking examples? Hmm. Let me guess. You know full well how to apologize. And you do it all the time. Is that right? Timothy was silent. I've heard it all. This is my job, you know. My vocation in life. Sometimes I question the life decisions that led me to break down your door. But... Timothy, look, Domenico and I were summoned to you on this particular day because of what occurred here mere minutes ago as you traveled home with a wheelbarrow filled with bedding for your pet bearded dragon. Bearded dragon? Isn't that what was in your wheelbarrow? Nobelina said, looking at Timothy with a touch of pity. That was decorative gravel for my garden. Ah, oh, you know what? That's my other client, Orlando. He has a pet bearded dragon. He also had a terribly disappointing haircut the other day. But we worked through it. Timothy blinked. Anyway, bearded dragon bedding, decorative garden gravel, it doesn't much matter. What matters is, you rolled over your neighbor's lilacs. They were daisies. Aha! Uh -huh. So you admit 
to running over them. It's not like I aimed for them. And I'm sure when you rolled over these exquisite, unparalleled daisies that you were ever so sorry, weren't you, Timothy? Did you beg for forgiveness? What? Did you promise to give Bedelia your firstborn child? You think that would be appropriate? I'm asking you, my dear, what do you think is appropriate? Nobelina's sparkly blue glasses began to slide down her face, and she quickly pushed them back up. I think a simple apology is fine for something like that, and that's what I gave her. Did you? I... I think I did, Timothy said, but now he was uncertain. After all, he'd tried to put the incident out of his mind as swiftly as he could. Domenico, roll the tape. Domenico flitted through the air, and Timothy grimaced as he pressed a button on his little tape player, having a sinking feeling of where this was headed. My flowers, Timothy heard Bedelia say. I just planted those yesterday. Then there was silence, and Timothy wondered if perhaps the tape player was malfunctioning. Of course he'd said he was sorry, hadn't he? After a few more awkward moments, during which Nobelina and Domenico stared at Timothy, and Timothy tried to look away, He heard, oops, Domenico clicked off the tape player. There has to be more on there. That's not all I said, Timothy said, his eyes wide. Oh, Timothy, this is worse than I thought. Huh? Not only are you, I'm sorry to be harsh, but you are terrible at apologizing. You also seem to be suffering from amnesia. Domenico, did he hit his head recently? I don't think so. I've been watching him for 23 hours a day and I haven't seen any head injuries. Timothy was incredulous. 23 hours a day? But Nobelina wasn't listening. Instead, she fluttered around the room, muttering to herself, Apparent amnesia, but no head injuries. Of course, this case would fall in my lap right before I leave for vacation. Remember, these turtles are lost. They need your guidance. They have nothing close to your perspicacity. They are poor, pitiful. I can hear you, you know. Nobelina glanced over at Timothy and winked. Then she dropped out of the air and settled herself on the floor of Timothy's cottage. Timothy, in my professional expert opinion, you are in denial. No, I'm not. That's exactly what a turtle in denial would say, my dear. Timothy didn't know what to say to that. Listen, I've seen plenty of turtles just like you. They run over their neighbor's flowers left and right. They borrow their cousin's plaid socks without asking. They spoil the endings of mystery novels for their friends. They tell their mom what they really think about her shell decorations. And when they realize their mistakes, they offer paltry apologies. Sometimes none at all. And skip along on their way, pretending as if nothing happened. Nobelina saw that Timothy's expression had not changed. He still looked puzzled, as if all of this was just happening to him out of nowhere. She eyed his seven-layer sandwich. Domenico, she said, a sly look on her face. When's the last time I ate something? Domenico checked his watch. About three hours ago. Oh, dear. I'm positively famished. Nobelina zipped through the air and settled next to Timothy's reconstructed sandwich. She began picking it apart, 
and eating it. Hey, Timothy said, feeling his own tummy churning with hunger. That's my sandwich. This is your sandwich? Yes. Oh, I simply didn't realize, she said, innocently blinking her big eyes. You had to have known it was my sandwich. You barged into my house. Timothy suddenly felt very angry. Who was this fairy anyway? What right did she have to spy on him? To burst through his door claiming he had a problem? It was she who... Oops, Nobelina said. She set down the sandwich and locked eyes with Timothy. Timothy stopped short. He felt his anger evaporate as if a door had opened and it had rushed out. Nobelina peered at him, her eyes narrowing. Oops, she had said. Timothy felt the same sense of unease spread over him that usually came after an incident. Despite himself, he thought back over the previous few months. Memories began popping into his head. Things like... The time when he'd accidentally spilled ketchup all over his Aunt Zara's vintage knee socks. Or the time he'd torn a hole in the bowling jacket he'd borrowed from his friend Oscar. Or the time when he'd squished a worm who'd been on its way to give the keynote address at a composting conference. The memories of the incidents kept coming. But the memories of his responses to them were fuzzier. All he could remember, with any clarity, was saying, oops. Dread settled in Timothy's stomach, joining his roiling hunger. Okay, he heard himself say, I see your point. Nobelina's eyes gleamed. Magnificent. It's time. To begin. Timothy! Oh, Timothy, how could you? I promised my pet worm, Clarkson, that I would bring him that mud cake. And now you've gone and given it to your pet bearded dragon. Timothy stared at Nobelina. She was zipping through the air with her head thrown back in drama. She peeked at Timothy. Timothy, apologize, she whispered, trying not to ruin the moment. Uh, sorry. Nobelina landed. Timothy, I'm very upset about that mud cake. That was a special treat for Clarkson. I'm really sorry about the mud cake. Better, better. Let's try again. Domenico, can you get me a pencil? I need a pencil to write something down. Domenico smiled mischievously. Timothy took the pencil. What? I didn't take a... Nobelina glared at Timothy. Oh, uh, right. I'm sorry I took your pencil. Wonderful, Timothy. That sounded much more genuine. Domenico clapped. Timothy felt himself blushing. Now this time, offer to make amends in addition to apologizing. What do you mean, make amends? Apologizing is fine, and sometimes it's all you need. But there are times when you must go a step further and make things right. Okay. Let's try it. Oh, Timothy. Timothy. You have crushed my pet mouse's little foot. It will take weeks to heal. Esmeralda, are you okay? Nobelina glanced at the floor presumably where her imaginary pet mouse sat with a broken foot. Timothy had to stop himself from laughing. 
This was ridiculous. But he tried to go along with it. Oops. I mean, not, not oops. I'm very sorry I stepped on, dropped an anvil on. I'm sorry I dropped an anvil on Esmeralda's foot. Uh, I I'd like to make amends by fixing her foot. Timothy, you cannot simply fix a mouse's foot. Come now, be realistic. Uh, oh, um, I'd like to get her a pair of crutches. Nobelina smiled broadly. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it, Esmeralda? Esmeralda agrees. The situation was completely absurd. Still, Timothy felt a sense of warmth flow through him. Timothy, you are a quick study. Thanks to my guidance, of course. I do believe you're ready. Uh, huh? W ready for what? To take your newfound skill into the wild. And before Timothy could protest, Nobelina grabbed him by the foot, dragged him out the door, and flew upwards into the beautiful afternoon sky. Timothy felt weightless as Nobelina pulled him through the air. It was strange, but he felt no fear at all. It was a wonder. The sun was bright above them. There were puffy white clouds drifting serenely. From up there, Timothy could see all of Wormish Pond. The water's surface shimmered beautifully. He watched as a family of ducks paddled through the water. At the other end of the pond, a beaver added sticks to its lodge. Frogs croaked, turtles lazed in the sun. A bird flew right by Timothy and Nobelina, giving them a puzzled look. Up there, Timothy could see the full expanse of his homeland. He marveled at the fact that he'd spent his entire life there, in this one place. Nobelina began drifting downward, and they traced a wide, slow spiral through the air. They landed, gently, in a patch of pond grass. That was amazing. Thank you. Timothy? Timothy turned to see his neighbor, Bedelia. She had a sour look on her face, reminiscent of earlier in the day. Timothy felt his breath catch. He looked at Nobelina, but she simply arched a brow and nodded to him, as if to say, get a move on. Um, uh, Bedelia. Timothy's mouth felt dry, but he went on. I wanted to say, I'm very sorry I ran over your lilacs. Daisies. That's right, daisies. I'm very sorry I ran over your daisies with my wheelbarrow. I wasn't paying attention, and I should have been. Timothy felt as though his mouth were full of decorative gravel, but he said the words, as uncomfortable as it was. He said them. Bedelia's expression softened. Nobelina silently urged him onward. And, um, I, I want to make it up to you. Okay. Tomorrow, I'm going to go to the nursery and get you some new daisies. I'll bring them right to you. Bedelia blinked. That would be lovely. Thank you. Timothy realized he'd been holding his breath. He let it out, feeling relief wash over him. Bedelia was smiling at him. Actually, smiling. The unease that had filled Timothy just moments ago was gone. Well, I'll see you tomorrow then. Perfect. Timothy watched as Bedelia hopped away against the backdrop of the beautiful scenery of the glimmering lake, a bird swooping down to the water, the puffy clouds floating above, 
the sun beaming down on everything. He turned, expecting to see Nobelina ready to give notes on his performance. He expected Domenico to click a button on his tape player and play it all back so they could deconstruct every word he'd uttered. But all Timothy saw was a glittery cloud as Nobelina vanished from sight. Timothy felt a touch of disappointment and wondered why she had left without even saying goodbye. His eyes dropped to the ground as he considered it, and they lit upon Domenico's tape recorder resting in the grass. Timothy hesitated, then reached down and picked it up. He pressed the big play button in the center. Timothy had to dash. A turtle named Winkleson has lost his wallet, and it contained the one remaining photograph of his dear pet teacup rhinoceros, Bluebell. But I have faith in you. Now, Timothy, go and visit the others to whom you owe a true apology. And please consider your ketchup usage. It makes others uneasy. You understand. The tape player went silent. Timothy smiled to himself. He had no intention of reconsidering his ketchup intake, but as for the rest, he was grateful for Nobelina's guidance. He walked home, feeling a new sense of possibility. And he never had another visit from the Apology Fairy ever again. Apologizing can be hard. It can be hard for grown-ups. It can feel like you're stepping off a cliff and you have no idea if there will be a net to catch you. And sometimes the other person is not in a forgiving mood. But most of the time, if you can muster the courage to apologize and get over yourself a little, it turns out well. Then. Together, you can assemble a beautiful sandwich. Just an idea. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you so much to my Little Stories premium subscribers who are making it possible for me to continue sharing stories with children around the world. If you'd like to get more of the stories you love, an ad-free listening experience, and access to an exclusive bedtime podcast called Little Stories for Sleep, click the link in this episode description or visit www.littlestoriespremium.com. Thank you to Sophie and Lucy for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to the many premium subscribers who provided sound effects used in this story. Thank you to Eva, Olivia, Riola, Sila, Emerson, Reese, Jameson, Declan, Piper, Finley, Jeremiah, May, Myla, Zeke, Luke, and Mickey. And thank you, as always for listening in.